Aerial Lift Safety Program. Purpose. It is a policy of PLOS Incorporated to permit only trained and authorized personnel to operate aerial lifts. This policy is applicable to both daily operators and to those who occasionally use an aerial lift. PLOS employees will not use customer equipment unless certified operators are given permission from the appropriate personnel. Scope. The Occupational Health and Safety Administration, OSHA's 29 CFR 1926.453 and 1926.454, rules and regulations apply to erecting, dismantling, fall protection, furnishing, and engaging in work on aerial platforms. Any temporary elevated or suspended work unit and its sus supporting structures used for supporting workers, materials, or both are subject to the aforementioned rules and regulations. References. Requirements and regulations pertaining to powered material handling equipment are found in the following publications. Occupational Safe and Hand Health Standards for Construction, 29 CFR 1926-453. Occupational Safety and Health Standards for Construction, 29 CFR 1926-454. Procedures. These written aerial lift operation procedures establish guidelines to be followed whenever any employee works with aerial lifts at this company. The rules established are to be followed to provide a safe working environment, govern operator use of industrial lifts, and ensure proper care and maintenance of aerial lifts. Objectives. The objectives of the aerial lift safety program include all aerial lifts shall be designed and construction in conformance with applicable requirements of the American National Standards for vehicle mounted elevating and rotating work platforms to ensure that operators understand the limitations and safe operations of the equipment, to ensure that all equipment is properly maintained and is kept in good working order, to ensure that equipment malfunctions are noted before accidents occur, to ensure that all non-qualified employees do not use this equipment, to ensure that operators receive refresher training as necessary, to ensure that qualified trainers are available to certify new operators and conduct refresher training, Minimum clearance for live wire electricity. For lines rated 50 kV or below, minimum clearance between the lines or, and any part of the equipment or load shall be at least 10 feet. Competent person. Each department using aerial lifts must select a competent person to oversee the aerial lift being used. The competent person also inspects all aerial lifts per the manufacturer's safety checks before each use. The competent person must have a complete grasp of functions, rules, and regulations as they pertain to the aerial lift he or she oversees. Competent persons will manage the daily activities on and around aerial lifts and ensure the following. Fall protection. Basket occupants must wear a body harness attached to the basket. Moving the lift. The lift must not be moved where the boom is elevated in a working position unless the lift is specifically designed to do so. Lift controls. Lift controls must be tested daily prior to operating the boom. Backup alarms. Audible and visual alarms must be tested and in working order before each use. Boom and basket loads. The manufacturer's boom and basket maximum intended loads must not be exceeded. Outriggers and brakes. Outriggers must be positioned on pads or solid ground when used. Brakes must be set any time outriggers are used. Wheel chocks must be installed before the lift is used when working on an incline. Barricades and signs. The area beneath an operating aerial lift must be barricaded off and access to that area must be restricted. Restricting access may be accomplished through the use of barricades and signs. Responsibilities. Safety Director. Responsible for developing and revising the written aerial lift safety program. In addition, the safety director will be responsible for the training requirements and maintain documentation of training. Table 1.18 shows minimal clearance distances for live line bare hand work with alternating current. Volting range phase to phase kilovolts 2.1 to 15. The distance in feet and inches for maximum voltage. Refer to this, the safety manual, or see the foreman with questions. Job site foreman. The foreman on the job site is the competent person responsible for seeing that the aerial lift safety program is adhered to. Safety committee. Safety committee is responsible for auditing the entire aerial lift safety program, providing training, assistance, and materials to the department utilizing aerial lifts. 
All employees. Employees are responsible for operating aerial lift equipment according to safe and proper techniques outlined in training classes. In addition, employees are responsible for notifying the foreman of any unsafe conditions related to the equipment. Project Manager, responsible for assuring that field personnel have the required training for use of aerial lifts. Training, aerial lifts. Aerial lifts are considered any of the following. Vehicle mounted aerial devices to elevate personnel to wor work areas not accessible from the ground. Extendable boom platforms, aerial ladders, articulating booms, vertical towers, and a combination of any such devices. All employees who may on occasion work on an aerial platform must be trained. Training covers the proper use, inspection of, and hazards associated with aerial lifts. Aerial lifts may be modified for uses other than those intended by the manufacturer, provided the modification has been certified in writing by the manufacturer. When working on an elevated platform, several factors must be considered. Fall protection. The ba basket occupants must wear a body harness attached to the basket. Also, personnel will stand firmly on the floor of the lift and will not climb on the side rails or on the edge of the basket. Moving the lift. The lift must not be moved when the boom is elevated in a working position unless the lift is specifically designed to do so. Lift controls. All controls must be tested daily prior to operating the boom. Boom and basket loads. The manufacturer's boom and basket maximum intended loads must not be exceeded. Outriggers and brakes. Outriggers must be positioned on pads or solid ground when used. Brakes must be set at any time outriggers are used. Wheel chocks must be installed before the lift is used when working on an incline. Barricades and signs. The area beneath an operating aerial lift must be barricaded off and access to that area must be restricted. Restricting access may be accomplished through the use of barricades and signs. Roles and responsibility. PLOS Incorporated. Appoint an individual as a competent person, ensure that they have been properly trained and can effectively oversee aerial lift requirements. Provide appropriate types of aerial lifts. Competent person. Attend aerial lift safety training. Manage daily activities involving work performed on aerial lifts. Perform required inspection of all aerial lifts. Supervisors. Ensure aerial lifts are being inspected at predetermined intervals. Ensure aerial lift safety requirements are followed. Safety director. Provide general training and competent person training. Assist competent person in establishing, establishing aerial lift inspection guidelines. Provide period, periodic audits of the aerial lift safety program. Individual, attend aerial lift training. Adhere to aerial lift safety requirements. 